Let's, let's, let's play some um, cool Tito's on Sleeper today. <gasps> How's that sound? It sounds like a good plan to me. I press this button, it's gonna get all loud because the title screen's always much louder than the game. Right, right, right. Well, maybe not this part. Maybe I press continue. There we go, there we go. Yeah, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Let's do it! Yeah, that's do it! Let's see, what happened last time? I helped Lem and Mina. And we... We went to with them one time, we got one ending. Then we stayed behind, and now we're continuing. Exploring stuff. 18 hours of pure peace I had from having this page opened has ended. God damn it, how terrible. Look at that load, that load icon. So cool. I have full rage. Um, quell your rage by listening to some cool uh, citizen sleeper. What about that? I don't remember what the heck was going on. What the heck were we doing? <laughs> what were we doing up here? What's this? Oh, are we, are we, uh, this is Bliss's thing, right? This is the second mission. Let's see. Reinforced bulkheads. Welding in a zero-g farm is tricky. The torch, the heat, the sealant, everything can damage the crop you are trying to save. Damn. That does sound pretty tough. Sacrifice section? Vent a section and you have a better chance of saving the remaining crops, but you will lose some in the process. The question is, how many? Hmm. Look at that perk predictive reason he's got like a t what is that, like 10 pluses for fragile bio? Yikes! Fragile biome. The sycamore seed's internal biome is in trouble. Every action will bring it closer to collapse. Aw, oh, man. Saving the crop. The sycamore seed needs to be reinforced and sealed. Otherwise, the crop will be lost. So, if you do nothing, it's fucked. If you do something, it's possibly fucked. If you do too much, it's definitely fucked. It sounds kind of like a lose-lose situation either way. I think we'll actually avoid the critical action in this particular case. Hmm, so it adds to fragile biome no matter what. Exciting. Much better rolls. That's all I can do for you today. I don't think I have anything up here, right? Is there still like a Y question mark here? Killer's been dealt with, hasn't he? His uh, user interface thing should have disappeared like, uh, what was the other guy's name? It's Killer and uh, Hunter. Hunter's been dealt with, so uh, Killer. Killer's bar should be gone too. I don't nothing to do but sleep. Some scrapples. Hmm. Ah, I got a one for both. 
Uh, I guess we'll try it. Oh, we still finished saving the crop, so I still, I still say that was the win. You and Bliss are floating in the bay's airlock, waiting for it to cycle. You pick a few leaves from your clothes as you wait. They float around the chamber as if carried by a lazy wind. It's called Zero Gravity. Zero G. Clean work. Bliss bows a little. Well, thank you, Sleeper. You didn't do so bad yourself. She checks her tool belt. Seems like we are getting into a good rhythm. The now familiar sequence of clunks and rattles sound out, and then the door hisses open. The moment it does, you know something has once again gone wrong. Rip. What's all this? Liss asks a confused-looking Moritz. Beside him are a set of crates, anchored to the bay floor. He has clearly just brought them in through the bay's freight lock. Moritz looks nervously between the two of you before answering, It's payment. Uh-oh. -uh. Oh, wait, they're not going to pay us in money. They're going to pay us in supplies or something. We could, like, sell the supplies, though. He runs a hand along the crate. The Sycamore Seed crew just brought them over. He stops, but seeing the look on Bliss's face adds, They were very thankful. I bet they were. He clenches her fist. What the hell is inside? Mortz leans over and struggles with the catches on each side of the top crate. As he does, Bliss turns to you. Don't say it. <laughs> Bliss stares into space. Don't you dare say it. I guess we're gonna stay quiet. Please sign it. Don't. She gives you a hard look. Hey, I stayed silent. I stayed silent. This isn't my fault. Mortz finally gets the catches free and the lid floats off. Lit drifting up into the bay. As it does, a small brown lump floats up with it. Morris reaches out a hand, or reaches out and catches it as it passes him. Is that a... Mushroom, Bliss finishes. A damn mushroom. They paid us in mushrooms? Not just mushrooms. He holds out a clump of tightly packed leaves. Produce. Bliss starts laughing. Goddamn Haifa commune. Should have known they didn't have a chit to rub between them. She knocks a small brown mushroom across the bay. I mean, I feel like if you're doing this kind of work, wouldn't you take at least some of the money up front? Like half? Half paid before before project done, half after or something? I feel like it's crazy to just do all the work and then expect to get paid at the end. If there's no, especially if there's no like contract or whatever. They should have a contract. How, how are they getting ripped off? I thought this was the future. Even back in the old days of 2024, we have, like, contracts and stuff to prevent getting ripped off, you know. Here they just do the entire work and then expect to get paid. They apparently operate the same as a restaurant. Damn girl, ooh, still single. Um, Chloe. Yeah, this guy right here. Get him! Get him! Claws! Claws are, uh, claws are okay. Ah! Whoa, is that some spinning uh, fried shrimp or something? That's what it looks like. Tasty, tasty. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Chloe, die! Deciding on your last achievement. If I don't, if I don't get it on my own anyway. Ah, Bliss. Moritz grabs her hand. These are good, fresh. We can sell them. To who, Moritz? Are we running a grocer's now? We need cryo, otherwise this whole bay will be shut down. We can't pay for parts with leafy greens. He waggles them in Moritz's face. Uh. I mean, Moritz is right, so... Liss raises an eyebrow. Fine, maybe Moritz is right, but what do we do between now and market day? 
He rubs her forehead. What a joke this place is turning out to be. Mortz closes up the crates and starts moving them. It isn't that ba bad, Bliss. It's a step in the right direction. He glances at you, looking for backup. They'll sell well. I have no idea if they'll sell well or not. Bliss sighs. Looks like I went into business with a couple of wannabe farmers. She laughs. Prove me wrong, then. Show me this is a windfall. She kicks away towards the new patched-together terminal. Until then, I'll be working on how to keep this place open. Mort's mouth is a thank you and goes back to moving the crates. You would better be on your way, too. Hmm. So we got three days to wait. Third time lucky. Liz is taking another shot at landing a contract. After the run you've had, it seems like a last chance. The four days until the next job. I forget how to like move the interface up here. We're right out of travel around up here. I got that. Interesting, though. What the heck was down here again? What are we doing here? Oh, uh, Rabai and Sabine were like getting uh, dirt on the Yannick guy, right? Enjoying this game? Yeah, it's a pretty cold game. Those are both done, apparently. What's this? Do, 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 do. I guess I could put my dice into this tomorrow. Nothing I can do but go to sleep right now. Might as well sleep down here so I can check all these and see if I can do anything with them. mostly been f focusing on this first area so I haven't done too much in the greenway yet I was like let's do all the stuff in this the first area first you know it's crazy right uh, that's to get money pretty good on money right now don't need a ship mind fragment so I wanted to get one more to uh, make a core, but I don't need to make a core right now. I don't need to buy scrap. I don't need to make money or sell scrap. Although I definitely could. I don't think I need the scrap right now. I could go ahead and buy my next stabilizer. All ready for when I want ever I want to use it. I don't need to make a ship mine core. I can buy some taste if I I don't have oh wait, do I have enough? Oh I do have enough mushrooms. I have five. When did I get five? I don't know. I can finally do his thing! He's been wanting to me to uh, get a mushroom since the first stream. Like three streams ago. Wow, Emphis wants to make this old recipe. He'll need three handfuls of ghee roll caps. Fresh and fur. Let's do it. Emphis eagerly takes the bright yellow ghee roll caps. He seems pleased with them. Ah, oh, can I come back in some days? Three days? Ghee roll prep. Emphis is working on gathering the ingredients and preparing the mushrooms. He doesn't like to rush these things. Three days to prepare mushrooms? You say so. Not like I know anything about preparing mushrooms. I'll take your word for it, though. This is a gambling place. Guess we'll put our points into here. Only one? That's more like it. Only one! Rip off. And ripped off. That's first thing unavailable. Ooh, let's see here. 
As you enter Rabia's office, you hear voices. Is that Sabine? You push open the door. Leaper, what good timing. Rabia calls out as you enter. I wanted to introduce you to someone. The man is standing at the center of the room, speaking quietly with Rabia. He turns as you come in. Meet Yannick. What? Oh, is this the guy that... Uh, did some shady stuff? Do I remember what he did? Uh. Oh, the prosthetics. He was like, uh, he had stuff in the prosthetics to monitor them to sell the data to SNARP, right? And the people who have the prosthetics don't know about it. That seems, yeah, that seems kind of questionable. Oh, that's it. This is Zodic. He's got, he's got style, uh, flair. What do they call it? What do the kids call it nowadays? Drip. Yannick, Yadigan, Eldar. Leaper. He nods. Been hearing good things from Robbie. He smiles an easy smile. Um, uh, obviously I want to be cordial. Good to meet you. Likewise, likewise. He waves a ringed hand. Now, Robbie, where were we? Actually, Rabia places a hand on your shoulder. The sleeper was what I wanted to talk to you about. She doesn't spare you a look. What is going on? Well, okay then. Yannick tucks his hands into his pockets. Go on. I'd like to recommend them to your ward. A tiny pause. They have shown themselves to be a capable ally here on the spokeside, but we have more than enough to run our territories. But here the main block is proving more difficult. Hmm. Uncools? Why? Yeah, you, you don't like my use of young language. Is that dab in there? Dab. <laughs> Yannick leans forward, slowly. It's a mess, Robbie. He waits, his tinted glasses shimmering despite the lack of light in the unit. Wait, how are, how is his how are, how is his glasses like shimmering if there's no light? That's like pure evil people glasses, man. I can use them, he suddenly decides. Rabia smiles. Good to hear. I can immediately And it cuts her off with a raised hand. One second, he steps one surprisingly light step closer to you. You eager to work, sleeper? Uh, what kind of work? A question. Yannick lowers his head and raises it again as if he dropped something. Nothing new for you, he answers, not quite looking at you. You don't follow. What is he saying? That concludes it, Yannick pronounces. Laper can come work in the yard, in the ward. Yard? Ward? Same word, right? Anytime they like. You shoot her by a confused look. Rabia finally glances at you for a moment, but it is so fast you almost miss it. Good, I know you'll be happy work with their work, Yawn. <laughs> oh wait, I think that's Rabia talking. Is it? Yawn, Yannick. Okay, yeah, that's Rabia. Good, I know you'll be happy with their work, Yawn. Yannick squeezes out and, er, wait, reaches out and squeezes her shoulder. Sure, Robbie, he says. Now oh, please, he says, turning to face you. Let us old friends get back to it. He guides Rabia away, leading, leaving you standing alone. You look to Rabia, but she is deep in conversation. And so, stunned and confused, you leave. Interesting. Yonix Ward. Low end main block. Control the block. The massive block at the center of the low end is made up of layers and layers of units. Patrolling this vertical city is a challenge. Ooh, that does sound challenging. Yannick's trust. Yannick is a strange character, but he seems to understand the value of hard work. You'll gain his trust with time. Hmm. Alright. What was this again? 150 cryo? It doesn't seem worth it. I don't have any Matsutake mushrooms. Honestly, I'd probably grow them in the Greenway area. You have upgrades? I have three upgrade points? I didn't even notice. 
voice acting pro. Hey, Pyro! What's up? What's happening? How's it going? Or if cool minus sunglasses. Yep, that's that's uncool. Has nothing to do with whatever I said. Okay, okay. Yannick, am I mispronouncing it? I have no idea how to pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce most of the names in this game. Is it Yannick then? Is it Yannick or Yannick? I don't know. I didn't look it up. I just guess. Unless their name was super tough and unpronounceable, then I'd probably give them a nickname. I really want to put our points in. Grab components at home to repair condition would be pretty cool. But only if I can get scrap. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to decrease my prices more by making it plus two there. Wow! I'll do it. Metal Duff that's still discounted by 20% though. Let's go look at the numbers. Now plus 2 though, so it should be more than 20%, right? 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 Let's go. Where's the stabilizer? No, it's still 20%. What am I plus 2 in then? I thought it was going to decrease it by more than 20%. What the heck am I plus 2 in then? I have no idea. Possibly just wasted my points, but who cares? I'm hungry. Uh, I was putting points into this first before Yannick saying. It only does one at a time. <laughs> oh, there's two. Just have to get a positive outcome. Well, since I only need one, we can probably finish out this. There we go. Squatters rights. Found a place and made it yours. Achievement unlocked. Cool. Prepared unit, sealed housing unit. Oh, it's a new place to live. Eat a stray. There are signs that a stray animal has been nosing around near the unit. A handful of chits for some crackers should bring it out of hiding. Obviously! There's three cry. Oh, let's do it. How to feed the cute maybe kitty cat. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Need to get some food first. <gasps> it is a kitty cat! <laughs> is your adorable? The stray. A low end cat. This cat better not start start talking or I'm gonna be very confused. The stray hops up onto a work surface and looks out of the unit's small window. It doesn't acknowledge your presence. It just sits there. Beside the tray of crumbled crackers, staring out at the low end. What is this cat's story? Are there more on the station? You haven't seen another in the low end, but in this vast megastructure, that means little. There could be a whole colony of cats like this one down in the Warrens. You look at its sleek, dark fur and sharp eyes. It doesn't look ragged. It looks at home. In fact, its presence in the unit makes you wonder if this is the stray's apartment which you are squatting in. I mean, it's probably got a buffet line. This cat goes from house to house to house, or apartment to apartment to apartment, or whatever. Unit to unit to unit. Being like, I'm starving, meow, meow, meow. It's got, like, all the food. This cat probably has it all figured out. Eat a cat! I know, right? Mm. So, uh, I wouldn't be able to um, withstand the temptation to try petting it, so... Approach the stray, of course. You lean a little forward and the stray tenses up. Perhaps best to give it a moment to get used to you. The stray settles a little and starts eating, picking at the broken crackers. 
You don't remember ever having been this close to an animal. It triggers something in you. A recognition of a life. Totally unlike your own, but still somehow connected. Parallel. Even interwoven. The stray l licks crumbs from its fur. Hmm. Were you born here? Obviously us. The stray lifts its head as you speak, but looks out at the glow of the low end, not at you. I mean, the cat doesn't fucking understand anything I say, so... It's cat. I, I didn't say food, so it doesn't understand. The cat's comfort in this place is enough to answer your question. The stray is a born resident of the eye, like all those thousands out there, beyond your window. This is, after all, a place for strays, for both those who begin their journey here and those who end it. You turn your eyes to the window, the one that the stray looks out of, and you both watch the stars and the ships together. You feel something pass between you and the stray, a kind of acknowledgement of each other, a sense that each of you might, sh might share something with the other, a point of connection. Then, all at once, the stray yawns wide, hops down from the unit and brushes along your legs, and then it is gone, out through the unit door and back into the corridors of the low end. Well, I'm going off to my next meal. See you later, sucker. Adorable, though. I can repeat the action. I can keep feeding the cat. Let's do it. Well, I can, uh, I'm just going to spend all my money feeding this cat. Just to see if there's the other cutscene store with the cat. Hey. There goes nine cryo. Well, I guess I'm gonna sleep. Oh yeah, it's, I need food. Emphasis is busy though. Can you get food here? Uh. Here? Where can I get food? Where can I buy food? Didn't I used to be able to buy food here? I don't know if I want to cook my ghee roll caps yet. I guess I have to go up the thing. Go buy some foods. Hey, Pro, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Mexican boy. Hope you're doing well as well. We have a stray cat at this apartment. We've been feeding it in the hopes that it will do another cutscene. Doesn't seem like it. I'm gonna throw away like 200 cry out of this cat. Just you wait. Uh, what do I want to spend my points on now? Do, do, do. Doing the Onyx thing, right? I think. Oh, that was a good roll. Spend the rest of the stream feeding the cat. That's goddamn right. Well, it's about time to stabilize her, I guess. Time for the next minute, Sean, huh? Sleeper! Moritz is leaning against the corridor wall. It's time. He looks away. Big job just came in. Grand finale. You up for it? I'm ready! All right then, we are in business. He pushes away from the wall. This has to work, Sleeper. Has to. He looks down. If it doesn't... Are we in trouble? The bay, you mean? He shrugs. 
We were already in trouble before you got here. The work so far hasn't been enough. Look, Bliss has had a rough time of it. I thought you of all people would understand that. He runs a hand through his hair. Sorry, didn't mean to be. He smiles. Bliss is a good one. She gave me a chance. I owe her. He straightens up. I know you have your own things going on, Sleeper. We all do. But the Bay needs someone. Bliss needs someone. Hell, I need someone to help keep help me keep Bliss from spinning out completely. He scratches the side of his head. Otherwise, there's not much I can do. He shakes his head. And I would hate not to pay back my debts. Or it stretches. I've got to get back. He nods and walks away. I'm out. See you up there. See you up there, I guess. But first, this stuff. Got our mushrooms. I haven't done this guy in ages, man. It took forever to find some mushrooms. You're doing well today, too? That's right, that's right, that's right. I'm just gonna have some tasty mushroom food. This better fill up all my energy bar or I'm gonna get feel ripped off here. Special mushrooms? Uh, they're called ghee roll mushrooms. How special they are, I don't know. They're used for food, not the other kind that you're thinking of. <laughs> Emphis is preparing the ghee roll caps. He has to. He has had to heavily adapt to this recipe, he says. But the smell is already incredible. It emanates from a strange purplish-white bulb you have never seen before. And he is slicing it finely. Um, an onion? Like a red onion? Maybe? I don't know. He brushes and slices the mushrooms and then places them in the wok with the sliced bulb and the oil. They caramelize there in that well-worn cru crucible. He adds liquids, transparent and opaque, and then turns down the heat. A sprinkle of leaves is the final touch. We have a moment, Sleeper. He smiles. Do you have a story? Something in the scent of the food gives you a feeling of nostalgia. Something distant and melancholic. It seems like the story should match that feeling somehow, and maybe you will feel better for telling it. Hmm. I think we're gonna recall our oldest memories. I'm gonna eat the mushrooms and start seeing sounds and hearing colors. I think so? I think these are just like the uh, food kind and not the, the trippy kind. But you know, I guess we'll see. You start by explaining that when you are emulated from a person, many of your memories are left behind. Perhaps it is an intentional part of the process, a way of keeping sleepers ignorant and malleable. Or perhaps it is a side effect of the imperfect emulation. You admit that you don't really know. What you do know is that some memories survive, and that on occasion they come back to you, like shadows passing overhead. You detail one recurring memory, which despite returning to you with enough regularity for you to think it familiar, always fades as quickly as it arrives. You struggle to explain the feeling of being whole for a moment that comes with this memory, and then how that wholeness slips away to leave you feeling like you have just you have forgotten something important, but just can't bring it to mind. Emphis nods throughout, cooking as he does with deft and skillful movements. Whatever you want, cat. Are you gonna go that way? Okay. You start to trail off when you realize you can't find the words to explain how the memories you do have feel like both yours and someone else's at the same time. And how that always fills you with a certain sadness. <gasps> no. The sadness of remaining forever unknown, even to yourself. Damn. Emphis finishes cooking and meets your eye. I'm sorry, sleeper, for your troubles. He puts the walk to one side. I appreciate you sharing with me. He smiles. I hope it lightens you a little. He passes you a bowl and heaps the ghee rolls into it, their yellow color mixing with the pale sauce and horals and blooms. Eat. Hitch, he's bossing me around. 
He's just demanding that I eat. The dish is delicious. Filling. It warms you as you eat in a way you weren't even sure your body could be warmed. It is a small mercy, you think, that SNARP left you this pleasure. Many of the features of frames are there to stimulate human experience. You know that much. Emulated minds cannot be rewired, so they need, their need for embodied experience must be met. That is why you breathe even when you do not need air. Without that simulation, the sensation of drowning would be unbearable. Food serves another purpose. Your frame is able to metabolize it and produce energy from the raw material. Vitamins and minerals are excess, of course. Your frame only needs raw power. So much is wasted. And yet, while you eat this food and feel that warmth, nothing feels wasted. It all means something to you. As you finish, Emphis takes the bowl, the last of his cleaning. He smiles at you, and neither of you feel the need to say anything more. Instead, you simply exchange nods and walk your separate ways back into the bright market, somehow changed. Cool. Memphis mentions an old recipe for Matsutake broth. All he needs are two handfuls of Matsutake caps, freshly sourced. God damn it! He wants more mushrooms! Hey, that thing did fill up my energy bar. Good, 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 good. Time for Bliss's work, isn't it? To do a stabilizer now. What the heck is this? Forward vector? Solar sails? Let's see, patch solar sails. An exhausting task. Patching solar sails means maintaining a laser focus for long periods of time. And time is something you don't have. Untangle the sails. The spurs need resetting and the system rebooting. But if you are careful, you can safely untangle some of the sail while you do this. Hmm. Solar window. The selected launch window for the Starward Vector's maiden voyage is closing. This is going to be a tight one. Rigged and ready, the Starward Vector's experimental sail deployment failed horribly. Now its massive solar sails need to be repaired. Ooh. That only gave me two. Ooh. Do 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 do. Oh, I'm going to be doing the stabilizer because I'm going to need all my dice for this. I need all my dice for this. Well, give me two ones. I can't believe you guys. Hmm. It only gives me two. So sad. Better. What? You bitches. Fucking bitches. Ooh, fuck on bitches! And before I fail this one, it decides I just get neutral, negative, negative, negative. Wow, nice dice today. Jesus fucking Christ. It's fucking dice today. Do, 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 do. Huh. 
Only one free bow. <laughs> Not really worth uh, possibly getting negative by doing one and two. there's any I missed here. Just wondering why the question mark bar was still here. Doesn't seem to be here though. Down below, 200 cryos. Oh, ma! Spend them on something. Wow, I got some karate wheels. And some animal marjees. Wow. I guess the game decided I'm allowed to finish my uh, quest with everything with a blitz. I was like, fine, I guess you can do your thing. Alright. Ooh. The atmosphere in the airlock is euphoric. You and Bliss keep grinning at each other like idiots. Exhausted, blinded, sword aching idiots. Wait, I can get sword aching? Aren't I like a robot though? Do I just, uh, actually I probably have like emulated pain receptors or something. Make me feel human. Same reason why it as you simulate breathing even though you don't need to breathe. Leaper, that was incredible. He punches you on the arm. I never thought we were going to make it. Those idiots tangled the whole thing up like I've like nothing I've ever seen. We make a good team. This smile is a witting smile. As the lock's inner door clunks open, Moritz gives a rare whoop. He looks exhausted, too, and for good reason. Moritz has been the one ferrying tools and parts back and forth from the ship. His tired smile tells you he's glad it's done. Leaper! Bliss! He shakes his head. Impressive! When I saw that ship come in, I thought there was no way. I thank you, Moritz, she winks, for believing in us. Moritz rolls his eyes. You know what I mean. Take the compliment. He shoulders some of the gear that came back in with you and Bliss and heads to the racks to stow it. Bliss turns to you. I think you should be the one to do the honors. He nods to the ragged-looking console that Moritz assembled. I don't want to jinx it. She smiles, but you can see she is genuinely nervous. Don't worry. I'll stop worrying when the chits are in my hands, and I'm giving them to a gimbal bartender. I glide over to the console and check the screen. It takes a second to see what you are doing through the flickering, cracked display. But after a moment, you see the accounts. And there it is. Almost a thousand cryo. Sat in the base transfer account. Well, Bliss calls. Have we been screwed again? It's there. Bliss kicks off from the floor and spins up into the bay, shouting as she does. The noise takes Moritz by surprise and he knocks a rack of parts, scattering handfuls of metal fixings across the bay. The sight is something glinting steel catching, or the sight is something, there's cobble there. The sight is something, 
Glinting steel catching the work lights like glitter. Sorry, says Bliss, grinning, when she comes back down. I needed that. It kicks off and joins you at the terminal. Moritz, ev Moritz even managed to sell that produce. We made a tidy profit. Eventually. He laughs. Here. He loads a stack of blank chits into the terminal and transfers a chunk of the cryo to them. This is your cut. Bliss hands you the chits. Thank you for believing in this place. He looks away and smiles. Even when I couldn't. Wait, she couldn't believe in the place? When you first met me, I was on the edge of giving up. All it would have taken was one more push. But now? Now this place is sparking again. Work is coming in. There are funds in the accounts. Even Moritz has a spring in his step. You both look over at him, happily racking up tools. Uh, yeah, spring, 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 spring. Oh, that's right. That's because of you. He punches you on the arm. He likes you. Uh, what's his deal? What? Why is he always so quiet? He frowns. I'm not so sure. He doesn't much like to talk about himself, that one. He leans in closer. You know he came here looking to rob the place? What? I gave him a job instead. He laughs. Don't tell him I told you that. I just thought it might help you understand the kid. Mortz turns to look at you, and both Bliss and you awkwardly wave. Maybe it's time to change the subject. What now? From here on out, it's going to be a little easier. I'm going to look for some component contracts. Stuff that will keep us inside the bay. Not out in the black. I need to risk our necks if we don't need to. You want to cash out? That's fine. But there will always be work for you here when you need it. I appreciate it. He smiles and then, out of nowhere, quickly gives you a hug. Oh! She steps back and glances around reflexively. Take care, she says softly. You too. You turn to leave. And sleeper? Yes. He smiles. Don't spend that all at once. I, I will do that. Oh, she gave me 300. 300! Well, I guess I don't need to work for money again. Are we waiting for the next job now? Components repair. The bay is taking on low-scale repair contracts now. Morris is happy to offload some of the work to you. Oh. One last job. Morris has heard Bliss speaking with someone remotely. Is there another job coming in? I think uh, this one we gotta wait for. Once we got the clock icon. What's now? Now we wait for that, I guess. The only thing I can do here right now is the Onyx thing. <laughs> you almost laugh when you see it. The same small recorder, stuck to a different wall this time. Written across the fluorescent tape is that familiar word. Sleeper. You grab it quickly. Rabia says sorry. Sabine's voice sparks up once again. She said she didn't have time to brief you before setting you up with the old man. I'm sure you've got the play by now. Earn his trust, work the block, then we need you to get into his office. A pause. It's risky, but obviously you are the only one of us he doesn't already know. Either way, we need you we need to locate the link to S and Arp. You hear a shout in the background of the recording. Rabia says be careful. Bean continues. The data suggests there's some relay, processing the implant data and sending it to SNARP, but we can't lock down its position. Either he is moving it, or it's moving itself, or it is rerouting through other relays. We can't understand it. Maybe you can find some details on it in his office. Once he trusts you, you should be able to get close enough to get in the office. You'll only get one shot. The recording creaks and whines. That's the final puzzle piece, or the final piece of the puzzle to end this. A pause. Good luck, sleeper. I'm sorry, too. Be safe. 
the recording clicks off, leaving you in silence. You pocket the recorder, just in case, and walk away. Looks like it's, it is up to you. Onyx office, you gotta go in the elder's office. Find the relay. Yannick has asked you to collect his medicine from his office. Now is the only chance to find that SNR relay. Really? Where'd they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? I wonder. I've been I've been there the whole time. Why don't you know? They just hide. They just hide. Hi, Dre. Okay. Stretch. Whoa. I felt that. I felt that. Well, in times like this, this is what you save your 100% positive for. Actually, either one would work, because I've got some skill that I'm not sure what it is. I guess it's intuit skill? Don't they all upgrade, though? Some skill that upgrades all of them, so... But we might as well use this one. Too bad I can't upgrade it to 7 for like 200%, right? And it gives me extra shit, right? You spot the countermeasure on the drawer moments before you touch it. This has to be it, but you can't rush it. You look at the countermeasure on the drawer. It looks like some kind of shock trap. If you'd grab the drawer, you'd likely have thousands of volts running through your system right now. You wince. Once you find the anchor points, it comes away easily enough. You prize it from the drawer quickly and quietly, then listen for footsteps in the corridor outside. Nothing. All clear for now. You slide the drawer open, looking for other countermeasures that might be inside, expecting to see a chunk of tech, the relay. But as you slip it open, all you see is a handful of wires and an empty implant cradle. Is this some kind of mistake? You freeze for a moment, unsure what to do next. Why keep an implant cradle so carefully guarded? You remember Yannick having an implant, a small plate on the side of his head, just above his ear. You assumed it was for hearing or vision. What if it wasn't? The shimmering glasses of his come back to you in your memory. His strange movements, his speech. You look again at the cradle and there it is, printed on the frame. Proprietary technology, property of SNARP. Arbaya said the relay moved, that they couldn't get a fix on it. What if Yannick was the relay? His glasses. Wow. The thought hits you like a shock. Yannick, with a remote relay implanted in his head. Network to every single implanted enforcer in the low end. A shudder runs through you. Is he even in control? Or has SNARP wormed its way into the man? Could he even be considered separate from the corporation itself? You think of, the own, of your own legal status as proprietary technology. A puppet with cut strings. Hmm. Time to cut Yannick's strings, then. You reach around inside the cradle and find it. A remote connection. A tiny bead of a transmitter, likely controlling the link to SNARP. There it is. You pause for a moment. Then you squeeze it. Snap it from the frame and it crumples. Sparks and dies. It takes a moment before the shouts come. Before the scream. And you are already on the, your way out. Down the corridor. Down through the unit that serves as the lobby to Yannick's office. Then out onto the walkway where Yannick lies still. Enforcers gathered around him bemused. Should we approach or leave? We're curious, so we gotta approach. You push through the crowd and there he is, still crumpled. You arrange him a little, lie him down properly, feeling how thin his body is under his suit. You wonder how long he has been like this. A puppet for SNARP. With the connection cut, nothing remains but his body. Which means that Yannick, the man, was gone a long time before now. That's kind of creepy. This dude's been like... Kind of dead, I guess? 
a dead dead maybe mentally gone or whatever the subcorporations using your body for their own agenda uh, that's fucking creepy man you felt that yeah i did i stretched and my back was like Ugh, i felt that nobody has hair in this game maybe the protagonist uh i'm a robot so i'm pretty sure i don't have hair unless i have synthetic fake hair or something You place a hand on his chest. You are sorry for him, but it is done now, and you did not kill this man. You've seen enough. The connection is cut, and whatever Yannick was, or had it become, is gone. Yikes. Your anger is a hard core in your chest, and all of it is focused on S and Arp. Oh. Remote control achievement unlocked. Stop the signal. I stopped the signal, all right. SNR's gonna be kind of confused. Be like, hey, what happened to him? I gotta wait for them to do something now, huh? The aftermath. The low end is wild with stories about Yannick's death. You're still in. You're still waiting for Rabia to get in touch, but you trust that she will. Crazy stuff. What are we doing for the rest of today here? Uh. They're all gonna be low. I wonder if these ever actually disappear. But there's always ones around that you can get to trade for money. I'm thinking they're always gonna be around. I haven't really bothered recently because I don't need them. What else can I do with this? There's nobody else who needs anything here. I don't think. Well, first we gotta feed our cat, obviously. A stray crunches up the crackers as you watch. Sometimes they'll let you stroke them, sometimes not. Adorable. Ah, we're a whisper now, huh? Okay. I think I actually have to go across to the greenway for something I haven't done yet. Could I get this? Oh. There's no quest here. There's just money and then food. If I steal too many times, then I don't get anything. Oh, I can get gi roll caps here. Where do I get the Matsutake ones, though? Oh, I can clear the overgrowth here, right? Yeah, let's do that. Now we have to go sleep. Our citizens sleeping, that's right. Gotta sleep now. Get some more dice. I think we'll only have five this time. Yep. <laughs> if you buy the crackers and put them out, the stray will always come. That doesn't mean they like you, though. They are a cat, after all. What? Is this true, Chloe? Do you not like me? Like my food that I provide you, huh? Can't believe this. Cute cat. What's this? Uh, let's just alternate between the other ones. This one's ship mine, this one's scrap. Well rested Profilia is the best Profilia. That's right! I think I'm running out of things to do in this first section. I think we're actually reaching the second section today. Work on the aviary. 
God damn it. Uh, let's try rolling that. Ooh, much better. Hmm? Oh. Oh, I can make spores? You can do the entire game like this for immersive reasons. I spur it not. I could. Terminate spores. The old growth of the aviary has created a rich medium into which you can place the spores from the groves. They'll grow well here. Fungal beds. The moist corners of the aviary make the perfect beds for the spores. Once they are filled, they can be left to grow. Do I have any spores, though? I have to get them from here, don't I? Hmm. I don't have any dice for today. I can try that tomorrow. Get some spores and put them in there. See what happens. It's taking a while for Bliss to say. Maybe it's only been one day and I'm not paying attention. Are you just save until you have enough points to redeem Whisper Mode all the stream long? Oh my gosh! Uh oh, what's with that music? I mean, something's going on. <laughs> I don't know where. The Rabia? Oh. Do, do, do. Yeah, maybe nothing's going on and they just brought out this music to make me think something's going on? I guess they just did it to make me think something's going on. <laughs> Let's see, I want to see what happens when I do the spores. I need to get three spores. Got two. Four now. Extract the spores from the sample print and mix with water, then inject them into the prepared mulch. It is precise work. But... Well, now we're waiting for something. Fungal growth. The spores need time to germinate and spread in the aviary. The indirect sun of a few cycles should help them along. A commune, self sustaining community. I haven't touched this yet. Uh, work the canteen. Newcomers to the commune can work within the canteen, preparing and serving food for those that make the compound their home. Or work the grow beds. The grow beds are at the are at the heart of the commune, feeding the members and fueling their lab work. You are invited to assist in maintaining them. IFA member? The only way to become part of the commune is to work your way in through long service. It isn't for everyone. I guess. Rough repeatable, huh? Engage versus endure. Engage <laughs> gives you... Energy, right? So you would rather do it engage, wouldn't you? I have two more upgrade points? When the fuck did I get those? We should we should upgrade them. Oh, uh, uh, what can we upgrade? Hmm.
Cape 2 die, save when condition is breaking, I guess. I don't know what breaking is. That's, I've gotten pretty close to dying. I didn't notice it wasn't called breaking. Free points, don't know where they came from. No, they came from doing quest lines. What they came from. Oh, let's do engage. Ah, I went from a two to a one. Yeah, neutral, huh? New drive discovered? Uh, I did? Oh, the Haifa commune and maybe- or mushrooms ones. That's all I can do today, though. Their free points don't worry where they came from. <laughs> don't question it. Communist achievement unlocked. Communist noun, someone who joins a commune. Oh, really? Okay. She says that. This game reminds you of Cyberpunk? Ah! Well, I haven't played Cyberpunk, but it's got, like, people who do, like, upgrades and aren't really all that human anymore, right? They're kind of, like, part robot, I believe. Well, that, that kind of has similar themes. You play a main character as a robot. Uh... Your brain is, like, replicated from an actual human being. Or they use the term emulated in this game. Uh, you're a robot with memories of, like, your true human self and stuff. You escaped from the corporation that made you. And you're trying to, like, live your life now. I have a dorm? Commune sleeping quarters? Ooh, I get another house? <laughs> but I can't feed a cat at this one. This one's boring. The one with the cat is the best one. Rico, commune botanist. Head of the Haifa botany. Um. Okay. You head down into the Haifa compound, following a blue painted line that is labeled laboratories. The member you were assigned to work with told you they'd ask to see you, but you still have no idea what about. The line takes you to a blue door and through to a glass roof chamber where a network of stems and leaves filters the sunlight coming through the ceiling, casting the whole chamber in a strange yellow-green. I saw a video that asked if you support equality, do you indirectly support communism? <laughs> Rose biased? Me! I mean, everybody's biased. I'm biased towards the place with the cat. Rinka looks chill as fuck. He does. Peaceful, isn't it? Distracted by the green, you missed a woman standing at the lab bench, camouflaged by the dappled light. What? She, she's a secret ninja. Didn't even notice. She just chilling. Didn't even notice her. Welcome to my sanctuary. She smiles. Come, let's talk. She says, and beckons you closer. Who are you? Of course, my apologies. She offers a hand to shake. I'm Rico. I run the botany program at Haifa. Um, I mean, I've been working at Haifa, so I should know it's a commune. Botany program? Yes, the plants in the Greenway are vital to Haifa's continued existence. It's important we understand them. He lifts a tiny sample jar. Yellow spores dance inside. 
Haifa lives off the land of the Greenway. It's what allows us to live like we do. No one here pays or is paid. We sleep here. We feed each other. We work for each other. Rico walks away from the bench and waves for you to follow. She opens a small door and leads you down a glass corridor surrounded by vivid green. All this, she says, gesturing at the overgrowth. It's kind of a miracle. She looks at you with bright eyes. What do you think usually happens to plants on stations like this, when they are abandoned? Uh... Well, she just called it a miracle, so keep growing is probably not the answer. Asserting dominance? Uh, that's what my cat was doing, yes. It is certain dominance. Let's say they die? Eventually, yes. They cannot live without intervention. She leads you left at a crossroads. But here, they endured. She smiles to herself. Actually, no. They thrived. You look at the bright tendrils wrapped around the metal frames of the corridor. They look dominant, strong, like they are taking control of this place. Rico continues. Of course, Solheim tried to create a stable biosphere here, patchworking the surface with gardens and algae tanks that feed into a network of microbial reclamation systems. But the Greenway was always envisioned as ex extractive, a place from which the harvest is removed and sold to those living on the station. Not a closed loop. For this reason, when the collapse came, the Greenway should have gone with it. Erlin himself was so convinced of it that his first colony never even came here to try to reclaim it. The Eye instead relied on outside favors and influences, shipments from the inner system, and small-scale agriculture systems like kelp and fungal farm stacks. And yet here we are, among growth and decay, a biosphere flourishing. When Haifa came here, we expected to find only a va vacuum dried stalks and leaves, and perhaps some fungal colonies hidden in the mulch. But we found a jungle. It's like, whoa, is it shit ain't dead? What the fuck? With this, Rico hits a button on the wall and leads you through a large pair of double doors into a huge, impossible chamber. Impossible. I cannot. That's right, that's right, that's right. It is every kind of green. From the pale... Or not her. Uh, oh wait, this is this description. It is every kind of green. From the pale algae tanks to the dark vines that surround them. It is wet too. A rarity on the eye. Condensation clouds from li the light... Wait, condensation clouds to the light from the high glass roof. And gathers on the shiny broad leaves of shrubs. Ow! Good question. That is exactly our question. Rico turns to you, visibly excited by the room you're both standing in. It doesn't make sense, but in many ways the system has stabilized. Unlike the farm stacks closer to the gap, who need input to support their meager output, this place runs itself. Perhaps Solheim managed something new here. Perhaps they tweaked the plants, or built new systems buried deep below us. Or perhaps their collapse caused some fortunate cascade, an unlikely chemical reaction within the biosphere. That's what I'd like you to help me find out. She turns to you, her forehead wet with dew. Me? Yes, you. Rico sits on a railing. These halls run deep, sleeper, and I'm getting old. She's old, an old lady now, but she got a crutch there. She's old. She stamps her foot on the metal grating of the walkway. Whatever is causing this, it is, it's to be found in the groves deep in the greenway. Haifa won't spare anyone for an expedition. It's too dangerous and unnecessary, they say. I can make the case, but I can't get the votes. You sleepers are hardy beings. I know that much, and you can speak to the eye, uncover its secrets, in ways I never can. She holds out an arm so you can help her stand. Bring me samples, spores, seeds, and blooms. I can grow them in the lab and study them. The deeper they are found, the better. If I don't want to, I'm a goody fucking two-shoes. Of course I will try. Thank you, she smiles, 
and thank you for listening. Rika leads you back out of the huge chamber and up through the passages. She's a little slower now and stumbles on the steps. You help her where you can. It's good to have new blood in the commune, she says. Many of us have been here a long time, and few come through. She settles back at her bench in the lab, stretching her legs. You go to leave. Come back if you find something, sleeper, she calls. There are discoveries to be made. And you follow the blue line back up out of the compound, all the time thinking of that impossible, magical green. Cool. Nothing's impossible if you put your mind to it. So if I work really hard, I could drop a 500 megaton nuclear warhead on Freely's head. I mean, that seems like a little overkill. I would never expose my favorite streamer. Oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Head pad. You can drop a head pad on my head. There you go. I much prefer that. Good head pad. Haifa Labs. Commune Botany Labs. Oh, more spores. I need to get three more spores. Boom, we got three more spores. That was easy. Oh, wrong one. Do I have anything else to do here in the commune? I mean, members are expected to turn up for work assignments, and in return, their needs will be met. All are treated equally. You don't get money money here because they don't do money here. You just get energy. I guess it's a way to use your dice and if you don't want to spend money on food, but... Hydrate! Okay. Hydrate odd. Close enough. Yeah, that's close enough. Rico has asked for samples of spores from the deep groves of the Greenway. With them, she might better understand how this biosphere functions. Rico needs spores to study the strangely resilient biosphere that has formed around the Greenway. How is this place thriving? I don't know. Rico is grateful for the contribution. Sleeper, you warm my heart with each delivery. Thank you. Well, here's some more then. Next question, Rico, come in, button this, let's go. Sleeper. Rico greets you without so much as looking up from her work. I have some of yours here. Come see. She beckons you over to a heavyweight looking console, wired to a series of specimen jars, some of which contain your spores. What does it say? The spores you have here are a real cocktail, a selection of types from within the groves. But I've been able to isolate a few. He taps one of the specimen jars. Here we have... Um, there's some words here. Here we have Tricholama Matsutake. Rico breezes through the Latin and Japanese pronunciation as if it was nothing. <laughs> Show off. A species Solheim somewhat modified for use on the station. She brings up a panel on her console showing a chemical composition. All gradient, gradiented bars and obtuse acronyms. This is the composition of the Solheim modified Matsutake spores. Modified? Am I supposed to understand that's just mean, right? She knows I don't understand that. Yes, every species on the eye is a tweaked variant of Solheim's, of course. But that's not the point. Rico brings up another panel, identical in layout, but with wildly different colors and numbers. You see, this is what your Matsutake spores look like. They aren't the same? That's the conclusion, yes. Rico glances at the specimen jars if it might have something to add. They are fundamentally the same spores, but they carry different chemicals, different signals. He leans back in size. Hilheim may have introduced their own tweaked versions in the beginning, but the groves have, and still are, affecting them. 
affecting them how? It's hard to tell without samples of fully grown mushrooms, she meets your eye. And herein lies our problem. She moves to another desk where two trays sit side by side. The first contains nothing but plant mulch. The second you smell before you even look at it. The pungent aroma of the fruiting matsutake like rotting, sodden over overalls. Overalls? What the fuck? Sodden overalls. What? Laced with an edge of spice. The matsutake here are grown from Solheim stocks. Hold from a spore vault in this complex. He winks. They are delicious, by the way. <laughs> she sets them aside. The empty tray is germinated with the spores you collected. No activity. No germination. Nothing. But the groves are full. Um, she didn't make a mistake. She's she just missing what she needs to make those ones grow. Yes, they are. Rico looks at you directly, and you suddenly realize how much she's enjoying this. So well, here is our puzzle, sleeper. Spores from the groves won't grow in the lab. But gathering fruiting bodies from the groves is too unpredictable. We need to grow a fruiting body from some of these spores, so we can track it, understand it. In short, I need you to become my mushroom farmer. <laughs> actually, I already started. I actually did already start. Rika looks impressed. Well, well, an eager mycologist. I'd never have guessed. I assume you set yourself up in the aviary? I've been eyeing that place up for its proximity to the groves. Bring me whatever grows, not just Matsutake. There's much more than a couple of variants in there, so I'll need plenty of samples. She plucks a Matsutake cap from the tray. These little things are reflections of their conditions, their smell, their taste, their chemistry. It all derives from the conditions of their growth. He smells the cap. Enough of these and we'll have a picture of what is happening here. Of the ways in which this biosphere is modifying itself. Or being modified, whichever the case may be. Rico pops the Matsutake cap into her mouth, taking you by surprise. And don't worry, sleeper, she says while softly chewing. If this turns out to be a dead end, I'll make sure that not a single mushroom will go to waste. <laughs> Right. So, um, uh, if you if you just happen to hate mushrooms, you're doomed on the space station, man. So many mushrooms. Yeah, I already started growing mushrooms. It needs three more cycles, though. Hmm. Ye roll samples. The pale and delicate gyro mushrooms are more abundant than the matsutake, but Rico says they still help the process. Matsutake samples. The rich and pungent matsutake caps are Rico's preferred subject of study. Something about their environmental sensitivity. I mean, uh, I don't think I need the gyro, but I still need matsutake for emphasis as well. Beautiful! Rico gushes as you hand over the golden caps. You've never seen anyone so excited about mushrooms. That's funny. Oh, that's all I can do today. And one of these days I'm gonna have something else with Rabaya or uh, Bliss. Yeah, Rabia's gonna be today, tomorrow. Obviously, I have to feed the cat. I have a feeling Dobie would try to nuke me, though. No, he'd never do that. Ever, 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 ever. Hmm, all I can do is end cycle now. <laughs> Talk to Rabaya. 
Even before you entered the office, you can hear the sound of Rabia working the heavy bag. He is hammering it, the chain creaking as it shakes with each hit. He's been like this since... Bean doesn't finish the sentence. They're sitting on a stool, looking at the terminal in the corner, searching through the SNRB data you pulled all those cycles ago. Um, uh, is she okay? Just angry. We all are. But you have to remember, she knew Yannick for a long time. Bean glances nervously at Rabia. What SNRP did... Rabia stops punching and in the silence you can hear her breathing hard. Bean looks over at her and you sense something between them. You realize you haven't seen them together since they tried to kill each other in the same unit. A lot has changed since then. They hooked him up like a puppet. Rabia hits the bag. Break that thing in his head so they can control him. Push the old Yannick out. I don't know why he let them in. Rabia throws a few more punches. But it's a lesson. Don't let them in. Another flurry. Yadagon shouldn't deal with corporations. And we will never will again. She spits. He comes away from the bag. At least Yannick's death has been treated as natural. There's a chance we can come back from this. That Yadagon can hold on. But there are opportunists trying to take control. Of course. The bean turns to you. Yes, but now the connection has been broken. I've been looking at removing the trackers from the implants in Yadagun's enforcers. It's a significant job, but I think, with time, I can do the surgeries. Rabia walks away from the bag towards the far side of the unit. Those surgeries will never happen if Yadagun collapses. She shouts back at Sabine. Clearly this is a well-worn argument in this unit. What now for you? I wonder... Sabine looks over at Rabia. I want to help fix this mess if I can. There's the implants, and I want to return to my surgery. The low end needs doctors. What I understand now is that Yadigan can be something if we want it to be. Coming here from SNR, from the Core Worlds, all I saw was a gang. And with Yana keeping me on a tight leash, they shudder. <laughs> Rabia believes, and I want that belief. They look unsure. I also want to be done with S and Arp, but I doubt they are done with me. They glance away, rubbing their shoulders. I hope you are right. Me too, they smile. I've been wanting to say, Sabine begins nervously, I'm sorry that I didn't tell you where I came from. I know I've apologized before, but I want to again. They pause. Properly. When I leaked the data on the sleeper program, it was to try to help people, like you. They grit their teeth. But after all the cycles here, being pushed down, pushed around, trying to survive, all that got away from, all that got away from me. So when you turned up, they sigh, it shook me up. They run a hand through their hair. But I ended up here, so they look at Rabia. Oh, of course. They reach into a pocket and take out a handful of vials. These are the last of the case. You can have them. They drop them into your hands. After these last few, I don't know what we can do. With the, S with the SNR connection broken, they look down. But I know there are other ways. Repairs, other pharmaceuticals. I even heard there are some labs out on the Greenway. Perhaps they can help? They meet your eye. I'm sorry, I can't do more. Thank you for everything. Why wouldn't I just be grateful, right? I got some extra time. No nuke in the streamer. That's right. That's right. Hey, King. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. They look away, their eyes bright with tears. Rabia crosses back to you and sits beside Sabine. They look at each other, and you can't help but smile at the idea of them together. What are you two plotting? Rabia grins. Sabine laughs, and the sound is a welcome one. 
You watch the two of them teasing each other and smile. Later, when you leave, you take that handful of vials out of your pocket and look at them. You, still, you can still feel that core of anger deep down inside, and you don't know if it will ever leave. But SNR doesn't own you anymore. They can't, because this place, these people, own you. They are what makes you get up every cycle. They are what keeps you breathing. You put the vials away and walk through the low end, your senses tuned to every sight, every smell, and every sound, soaking it all in, living. Living! Ugh. Oh my gosh. He gave me three stabilizers. And after that, I am doomed, huh? Oh, I am doomed. I can't buy stabilizers there anymore. I have to figure out another solution before I need them. No pressure! I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm suddenly going to become a scrap farmer so I can repair condition, right? <laughs> I need two more days for Bliss, though. We're going back to the Greenway. I don't think there's anything else that I can do in this first section anymore. Good watching Candyman. That sounds like a friendly thing. Hmm. I don't think there's anything else I can do right now. This is the waste's ruined agriculture systems. Oh, I can gather scrap here. And then I could use the scrap to repair my condition, right? Do I have that upgrade? Out here, at the edge of the habitable parts of the eye, everything is scrap. The trick is finding components that are still usable and staying safe. Just one? You're not fun. And what's left up here is this other stuff, right? This is DLC story, I believe. I don't have any gear rolls. I don't know if I'm at late gameplay yet. Maybe? Am I at late gameplay yet? Is there anything else I can do with this dice? What about that garden thing I found? I found that like digital garden seed on this side, but I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. Hmm. I think the only way I can get Matsutake is the aviary. Do do do. I can try this, I guess. But uh, that has a negative. A negative of conditions. Uh, I was gonna say. A negative of condition. I feel like I'm gonna need this. What do we got? Flotilla aid. Oh, that's the DLC one. We got a nurturing grow bed for the seed. That's the. Maybe the mushroom thing does that. Still working on emphasis. Hmm. I'm running out of quests to do. Hard to believe. It felt like in the beginning there was five billion things to do. Nah, you're fine. Oh gosh, I'm fine. 
gosh, I am fine. One chance to say, huh? Well, we gotta feed our cat. Let's see what this scrap thing is. How much I get? Just plus one. That doesn't seem like a fair shake. Although, you could theoretically farm it forever, right? Just trade one for one. Keep yourself alive with that. Does the cat have a name? Oh, we just call the cat the Stray. Oh, its name is Stray. We don't even know if it's a boy cat or a girl cat. It's just Stray. It's like the cat in the game. Stray. No backpack though. Hmm. Well, I don't think I'm going to need the ship mine stuff anymore. So. I'm going to haggle over prices. You're firm but friendly, and eventually the merchants relent. They'll lower the price, but only for you. Lol. La 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 la. Let's make a ship mine core. We don't need anything at the cores. So we're gonna sell it for money. As takes the ship mine and thanks you. The stack of chits she hands you is certainly welcome. Woohoo! could I do? Money and no magies, huh? Give me some food! Isn't it about time for a Blissus thing? One more day. She'll be ready tomorrow. How are my mushrooms doing? I don't remember how many days I need for them. They'll be ready tomorrow too. I can get gear all caps here, but the danger is condition. I'd rather only do it if I have a good dice. I'd rather just try to stretch out my three stabilizers, which I know sounds crazy. I can fuck this up and lose condition as well. I only lost energy that time. Yeah, got two for two, huh? I guess we're gonna use this dar and then go to sleep. And check out what stuff we got for tomorrow. I'm gonna use this. I think these are all one and three. 
Probably just use it for energy. Oh, there's a two. But, but I, I gotta feed my cat. Alright. Sleeper! Long time! Moritz is smiling at you when you leave. Clearly happy to see you again. Moritz! Good to see you! Gotta be polite. Same, same. He rubs his hands on his jacket. How you been? Uh, really well. Good to hear it. He looks you up and down. I knew you'd make it work. You are a smart one. He glances around. Hey, look, I'm not down here to chat, though. I know Bliss said she didn't want to take any more big jobs, but she's changed her mind, or something. He grins. Because now we have someone looking for a refit of their ship in our bay. You would not believe it. They want their entire ship disarmed. Cutting out defense arrays, weapon lockers, ship-to-ship -ship countermeasures, the whole lot. He leans in. We'll be able to start an arms dealership with all the hardware we'll have up there when we are done. He laughs. Anyway, it's a massive job and we need some hands. Bliss said to go get you. So come on up. Bliss is waiting on you to accept the job. He pauses. It'll be good to have you up there again. He grins. Like old times. You're gonna turn the weapons dealing? I don't know if you want to turn the weapons dealing, man. Just click. Blush. When you enter the bay, it is weirdly quiet. Moritz must be out on some errand. And maybe Bliss is prepping the kit. Oh. You. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're on good terms with Don Keita, are we? We went through, through some shit last trip. It looks kind of sad now. He's got some mental trauma going. Maybe you shouldn't just fucking shoot and kill people then? I don't know. I can't say I feel too sorry for her. She, she did something really fucking stupid. Go get a therapist and work your shit out, I guess. I don't know. Ruffle stare! What are you staring at? What are you staring at? What you staring at? What are you staring at? What you staring at? What you at? Uh, what voice did I use for her? Uh, I don't freaking know. Yo, goddammit. Can't, you too, Mexican boy? I can't believe this. Leaper. Ankita is drifting at one side of the bay. You missed her completely when you came in. The idea of not seeing Ankita when you entered a room would have seemed unlikely to you several cycles ago. But seeing her without her armor, she seems smaller, less imposing. Ankita. She nods and kicks off from the wall, drifting closer. So, what is this? She asks. Come to avenge Ashton or his sleeper? Or just looking for another payout? Her anger is familiar, but quieter than before. Restrained. Hmm, I don't want to fight. Then why are you here? She looks away. And you can tell her anger isn't directed at you in particular. It radiates off her like fire. You better be ready to sign. Comes a shout from the bay entrance. Because I've got my best repair tech coming up here especially, and they are going to... Bliss glides in and suddenly stops herself when she sees you and Ankita standing off. Oh, sleeper, you are already here. Miss Cassetta, this is the tech I was telling you about. 
That's on the hub. She stops, looking between the two of you. Wait, do you two know each other? You want Kate to look at each other. Ooh. Don't you something, I guess? Let's see, let's see. You're silly. Ralph will tease. You're so silly. Don't you know that you're so silly? I mean, Ankita is a killer. And I don't like what she did, but calling it out by this point is just being petty, so. It's just like. Just like. Bible thump? What? <laughs> we worked together, I guess. We technically did. Liz squints at you both before continuing. Liz produces a slate. Now, Miss Cassetta, if you'd like to sign our damage waiver here, we can start on the decommissioning. He looks at you. My tech here is easy, eager to start, get started, as am I. <laughs> so she's not going to be a mercenary anymore. She probably feels guilty about killing a... Uh, I forgot to give you guys Ash did in the sleeper or whatever. So she's decommissioning her ship. She's uh, abandoning the mercenary job. What's she gonna do now? Who knows? Ankita scrawls her signature across the slate. Thank you, Liz pauses. And everything is okay with the special payment terms we discussed? He gives Ankita a strange smile. All fine, says Ankita, giving you another hard look. Then she kicks off and drifts, uh, and drifts to this entrance. I'll be in the gimbal, she says, and leaves. Special payment terms. She looks over her glasses at you. Look, sleeper, there's something I have to tell you. She glances around again. What's she so nervous about? Uh-oh. 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 This isn't exactly a typical job. Miss Cassetta, I mean, Ankita, gives you a knowing look. Doesn't have the chits to pay us, so we've made a special agreement. He sighs. I'm leaving. Leaving? Keep it down. I haven't told Moritz yet. He looks down. Just waiting to break it to him. Don't you tell him either. He stares hard at you. I'll tell him when I'm ready. And I don't want him getting worried about Ankita's history. He can be very protective. You should tell him. Look, all I care is that she is heading for the Star Ward belt. He looks out of the bay. That's where I'm headed. He turns back to face you. Also, I wanted to ask, she stops, unsure, if you'd like to come with us. Ooh, I wonder if there's two ending achievements here. One for going with her, one not. Hmm. Uh, we should go first, and then we reload and say, screw you! I would. Wait! I didn't get the answer! She interrupts before you answer. I know things have been hard for you on the eye, and you helped me so much. I asked Ankita if she'd carry two of us, and she said yes. Moritz will take over the bay anyway. Although if you stay, you are welcome to help him run it. I just thought... He sighs. You might be in need of a fresh start as much as I am. He turns away nervously. Think about it anyway. The birth is here, is there. We've got to finish the fir job first anyway. Is that is that the weather where you are, Dolby? Is that is it a little snowy? A little a little a little snowy where you are. It's like almost April, so it shouldn't be anymore. A hint? Oh man. I have to believe this. 
you silly person. You silly person. I mean, I mean, I don't know, Shama. And with that, she kicks away and heads to the racks before you can offer an answer. An answer? What's an answer, bro? An answer! Moments later, Moritz enters with a new cutting torch for the disarming of the Ambergris. The star word belt. You pushed your thoughts to the back of your mind. Time to get to work. Interesting. The Ambergris damaged cutter. Disarm Amber. Ankita wants it all out. Weapons, countermeasures, torpedoes. It would be a risky job if you didn't know Amber so well. Refitting Amber. Once this job is ready, you better be ready to make a fast decision. Stay with Moritz or go with Ankita and Bliss. I mean, uh, um, I mean the, uh, the choice before let me reload before the choice, so I think we can do that again. Working on Amber again is a joy. You know every inch of this hall, after all. You fitted half of it. <laughs> I bet. What? <laughs> Negative's only a plus one. That's not so bad. Uh, I think the mushrooms are ready, so let's go check them out. What are you profile staring for? Did I say something strange? It requires input to harvest? Seriously? Uh, the fruiting bodies are appearing. Gear rolls are easy to find. But Matsutake and other stranger types will require extra effort. Take your pick. Fungal yield. The crop of fruiting bodies has broken the surface of the mulch. Once harvested, you'll have to grow more. <laughs> harvested, I'll have to grow more? <laughs> Let me focus on Bliss's quest first. I only get one at a time, man. Maybe if I upgrade it to plus two, I can get multiples. Give me all the dice. Two random mushrooms? Two gee rolls. Two Matsutaka. Two more gee rolls. Four catcher achievement unlocked. Puts those sample collecting skills to good use. Oh boy! Hold on, I need to do those. And grow the ball over again. A little pain. I only have two, I need three. Then I have to do another day just for them to grow for four days. Blah 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 blah. How many Matsutakes do I need for emphasis? Is it two or three? 
Probably through it. But it's the wrong place. Only two, actually. Wow! Emphis inhales the deep autumnal aroma of the Batsutake caps and nods. He seems impressed. We'll need a few more days again. Emphis says he needs some time to ready the broth. Apparently there are some ingredients he still needs to source. Why does everything take time, I swear? Everything takes freaking time. No broth, not bar. Thought it was bar. Thought it was bar. He didn't really see the second word, so he just guessed. <laughs> You're so silly. You are, yes, you are. Also, cause you are. I don't need like four more days. God damn it, everything takes forever now. I used to feel like there was too much to do, and now, now, now everything takes too long. Bible thought. It's okay. It'll be fine. You're getting random scrap at least. You move diffused torpedo warheads into the bay, trying not to think about what Ankita used them for. Oof. Amber looks better than she ever has before. Liss has done an incredible job of cleaning up the hull, and despite the exterior changes being limited, she has the impression of being lighter, somehow sleeker than before. Orange drifts by. He has been loading up the final equipment onto Amber. It turns out Ankita will be taking her weapons, but packed and ready to sell at the first Starward belt port she hits. But now that Moritz is done, he seems in a kind of daze, loading back and forth aimlessly. You okay, Moritz? What's that? He turns. Oh, right. Yeah. Packed and stacked. He smiles a weak smile. I was hoping Miss Cassetta would let me keep a warhead. Or what? He shrugs. I don't know. Just might be a cool thing to have around. Hey, sleeper. He looks down. Did you know Bliss was leaving? You understand now. She told him. That's why he is like this. Um. I did. He nods distractedly. He said this place is... is mine. He looks up around the bay like it's suddenly... like it is suddenly some vast space he doesn't know what to do with. He'll do a great job. He looks down at you. Hey, thanks, he smiles. I appreciate you saying that. Not many people believed in me before now. First Bliss, then you. A dark look suddenly crosses his face. Hey... Sleeper, there was something Bliss said. He meets your eye. Are you going to? Before you can answer, Ankita glides into the bay, a massive crate on her shoulder. Sleeper, you coming or what? Bliss is already on board. She stops by the terminal, holding herself in place. Moritz looks at her with a dazed expression. You look at Ankita. She's keeping it together now. He's packed all those bad feelings down someplace where you'll never see them and built a tough foundation on top. He may not be a mercenary anymore, 
but you imagine most people would think twice before trying to cross her. Well, she looks at you. I'm not eager to spend another moment of my time on this station unless I have to. She pauses, looking between you and Boritz. She sighs. I'll give you a minute. And she kicks off with the crate, taking it to the end of the bay, where the amber sits docked. You look back at Moritz. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that there's an achievement for going, so go, I'm going. Moritz looks like he might pass out. I get it. He steals himself. It's the right decision. Thank you, I guess. Hey, thank you for working with me these past cycles. He smiles a shaky smile. I learned a lot. Hey, look. He moves a little closer. You've got to find what you need. I did. Liss. This place. You. This was everything I needed. He sniffs. I was in a bad place, and this pulled me out. He looks away. You go find it. Ankita comes back across the bay. The final crate stowed. You coming then, sleeper? I mean, both of those are yes. I'm coming! She nods. Well, okay then. Come on over with your things and I'll get you settled. He pauses. I'm sure Amber will be happy to have you. He both glide away from Moritz. His eyes wet, but a smile on his face. He waves as you go, dwarfed by the vast bay, and you hope he will make it, even though you know, somehow, that he will. Ankita helps you through the lock, onto the ember, and the sense of familiarity is overwhelming. You think about all the time you've spent working on these corridors, listening to these sounds, diagnosing those hisses. Ankita gives you a minute before she speaks. Look, sleeper, I'm not going to go back over everything that happened. Besides, I'm trying to put that behind me. He stops, unsure of how to proceed. It's okay, the past is done. Or need to trust you again. Ah! My past is done. He nods. I... He stops. Thank you. I don't know if we can begin again, but we can move on. He sounds pained, tired. As you move off down the corridor towards the berth, she tries again. I don't think it was that I thought the wrong things about who, or what you are. I think I just didn't think. Of you, I mean. I didn't think about how things might affect you. Just thought I was a robot with no feelings. Can you believe this? And I realized I've been like that for a long time. Focused. Stubborn. Willing to get the job done at any cost. He pauses. This is hard for her, but you don't want to interrupt. Well, I'm sick of paying the cost. I'm sick of being used as an extension of something bigger. Something crueler than me. And having that cruelty, that violence, flow through me. I just want... To be me for a while. He looks down. Or at least figure out who that is. He takes a deep breath. But what I'm saying is, you can get off at the first port we hit in the belt. I wouldn't blame you. It's a smart move. He pauses. Or you can stick around and we'll see if we can find a way to make space for all of us. She looks away, her energy exhausted. Uh, thank you! She nods. Nothing else. This is you. She turns you to a small room with a bunk and a porthole to the flickering lights outside. The outside wall is sloped, like a roof, and tucked beneath it is a small desk and terminal. Liz is next door, though I think she's in the hold right now. She said she wants to make sure the warheads are locked down tight. Ankita observes your nervous response. I mean, they are, obviously. She gives you a look. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't want the warheads sliding around and going inside the, the hold, do we? Ankita slips away, and you look around the room. You go over to the porthole and place a hand on the wall and feel amber purr. You think you are going to like it here. 
You stay like that for a while, looking out of the porthole. One hand on the wall, feeling the ship. It is through that porthole that you will watch the eye getting smaller and smaller, drowning in the black. At some point, it will become so small that you could hold it between your thumb and index finger, and then it will wink out, and you won't be able to see it anymore. And it is at that moment that you will finally exhale and collapse onto your bunk. In moments, you will be asleep, and when you wake up, it will be among friends. On your way to somewhere new. Aww. Starward Passage achievement unlocked. Set off to the Starward Belt with a friend outrunning their shadow. Aww. You can try to outrun your shadow, but, you know, it's kind of glued to you. So, good luck. Good luck! I, I recommend massive amounts of therapy. You found a third ending. Raffle trophy! We might get another achievement for refusing to go. Just like we did with Lemon Mina's uh, endings. We'll see, we'll see. We won. We totally won. That's definitely the end of the game. No, it's not. Michael 80, huh? We've been here on this planet. Well, not planet. This spaceship for 80 days. The space station. 80 days, man. How many endings are there? I have no idea. They're still technically my first playthrough, so I haven't looked up any of the achievements or anything. There's probably 20 different endings, totally. This is the third one that I found, though. My first one I found was going with Lemon Mina. And then the second one was choosing to stay while Lemon Mina leave. And now the third one, going with Sam! Exciting stuff. Hmm. So I planted my mushrooms or not? Oh, okay. So it last saved before I planted the mushrooms. Three out of question marks. There's wrap. Ophelia! What's up? Now we're gonna finish repair round. And choose to stay. You're silly. No, you're silly. And weird. No, you're weird. Blah, blah. Hmm. You think of her and said, are you okay? Well, Miss Cassetta? He shrugs. He seems tired. And old. Like, older than she looks. She's leaving? Uh-huh. Gives you a look. You didn't know? Do, 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 do. do a great... Can you manage it? He looks down at you, a glazed look on his face. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm staying! Moritz looks like he might pass out. Sleeper, are you sure? I... 
Are you doing this for me? There's supposed to be a question mark there. I don't see. There's no question mark. That sounds like a question. Where's the question mark? But you keep. I, I, I keep what? I keep being pro, you mean? <laughs> With my cool glasses that you don't like? I will always have them. And you will just have to suffer. They're amazing. They're 10 out of 10. They're, they're awesome. I'm staying for me! Mort nods. Alright then, you're staying. He grins. Ankita comes back across the bay. The final crate stowed. You staying then, sleeper? I'm staying. She nods. Well, okay then. One less mouth to feed. She pauses. Look, sleeper, I'm not going to go back over everything that happened. She sighs. I'm trying to put that behind me, but... I hope you find what you're looking for here. She smiles and kicks off gliding to the ambergris and the starward belt beyond. You both watch in silence as Amber's drives fire up. I guess this is our place now, says Moritz, the weight of everything suddenly hitting him. Your place. He smiles. Okay, but I'll need some help from time to time. You both stay for a while to watch Amber and Bliss and Ankita leave. And then Moritz goes to the racks to finally implement a new organizational, organizational system and do help head out, promising to be back to check on things soon. As you ride around the soft curve of the hub, you catch glimpses of the distant stars flickering through the windows. They are beautiful, it's true, but by now you think of them as a distraction. In your time on the eye, you've realized there's nothing out there waiting for you. No fresh starts and no bright futures. Just a whole load of problems you haven't found yet. <laughs> no, your place is here. Among the people you know and the problems you know. You wish Ankita and Bliss the best of luck out in the belt. But as you do, you focus on the eye. On the vast spinning rim that rotates around its hub. On its buildings and flashing lights. On its people and places. This is your home and, for now, it contains all the futures you need. Oh, the fixed stars achievement unlocked. Everything can be repaired with enough time and effort. Oh, Maybe so. I can ask to go with that. That'll be a waste of nuclear weapon. We need where it's a water bomb. Damn. Good. I didn't want to get wet anyway. I wanted to stay dry. Well, we found the fourth ending. Woohoo! Four out of question marks. That's right. Powerful stare. Powerful stare to you too. Still have additional chapters, achievement list chapters, the DLC trail. Is it late game yet? Is it time to do them yet? I don't know. Well, if there's only four endings, well then I totally got all the endings. Da, da, da. All the achievements though, unlikely. I feel like I fucked up the, uh, scrapyard guy in the beginning. He basically told me to fuck off, so uh, I feel like I fucked up his, uh, quest line. But uh, I'm sure there's stuff I forgot or missed or whatever, anyway.
Oh no, you forgot what's left. Oh, I see. Next round is yours! Moritz arrives at the table with a couple of steel drink canisters. Typical of the hub's only bar, the Gimbal Lounge. He settles into the webbing beside the table and clunks them down onto the magnetic table. This place, you have decided, is ridiculous. A rapidly spinning cavernous sphere. The Gimbal's weak gravity, just like the gravity at the eye's rim, is created by its gut-wrenching rotation. The interior surface of the sphere is the gimbal's floor, which descends towards the equator where one long bar loops around the entire circumference. Tumbling out from that central ring are an array of booths and seating arrangements, equipped with all kinds of harnesses and webbing to keep customers in place. Yeah, I think I, th I think that would be too much trouble, you know? I think I'd just be like, I go somewhere where it has proper gravity. Those harnesses are there because the gimbal doesn't quite spin up fast or spin up fast enough, and you watch as the clientele bounce towards the bar in lazy arcs, or shift from table to table with graceful leaps. What are you thinking? asks Moritz, noticing you staring out into the gimbal. How weird this place is. Moritz glances around, as if for the first time. Yeah, Bliss never used to like coming here. Moritz takes a drink and stretches. Oh, sleeper, you sticking around? If you'll have me. Moritz nods. Of course, I'm going to need help in the bay. Moritz rubs the back of his head. One cycle at a time, that's how we'll take it. Nice and easy. You aren't sure if he's talking to himself or you. We'll make it. He lifts his drink for a toast. The next cycle, he pronounces and knocks it back. Then he's like, oh, where all my money go? I drank it all. Later, when you finally leave the gimbal, Moritz is still laughing. You help him out of the spinning gimbal and back into the hub, sending him on his way home to the bay. Then you pause for a moment to watch the stars as they spin and spin around the eye. You smile to yourself and think of Bliss and Ankita out there somewhere, among those points of light. To the next cycle. Wow! You can get money here now, huh? Component repair? The bay is taking on low-scale repair contracts now. Moritz is happy to offload some of the work to you. I'm not exactly strapped for cash. Uh, I do need some food, though. Oh, wait. I have a place for food right here. Why can't I just eat the four mushrooms I've got in my inventory? Really good that you left first, though. Pretty sure staying would mean you'd have to play again. I mean, if you choose to stay, they disappear and stuff. So yeah, you'd have to play again to uh, get the option to leave. You don't have any experience with that now, do you? You stayed. Aha! Aha! Now we need to wait for the mushrooms. Get over some of the ghee rolls we got. We might have enough to do our thing with just the ghee rolls. Yeah, it looks like we can finish her next section of her quest with just the gear rolls. Lol. Thanks, by the way, Profile Cool. You're welcome, I think. Rico meets you at the entrance to the lab, leaning on her crutch with a glint in her eye. Walk with me, sleeper. I'd like to tell you a story. She makes her way down the corridor that leads back up towards the main commune building. When people first crossed what we called found what we call Founders Gap into the Greenway, they did so against the wishes of Andre Erlin. At the time, Erlin was trying to stabilize the Union and establish control over the Eye in the wake of Solheim's collapse. It was chaos, competing factions. Caught failing systems. So many dead and injured from the riots. That was his priority. 
listen. Just shut up and listen. We both crossed through a glass roofed tunnel, the greenway outside crowded with vines and branches, dappling the light. Erlin had written the greenway off, cut off from the rest of the station, and linked to a broken spoke. He claimed it was only a matter of time before everything here would die. He refused to let anyone abandon their duty to the Union and cross. They were traitors to the cause, or as good as. Rico continues, making her slow but steady way into the inner gardens of the commune. There weren't many of us, but we believed that what was here was worth saving. We had to keep our plan secret until we crossed, and some of us left people behind. She pauses to catch her breath, her voice cracking. It is difficult to know if from the effort or emotion. <gasps> Maybe both? What we found was a disaster. Nothing like what you see here. Half of the greenway was leaking oxygen into space. The plants flash frozen. The other half was a swamp of mulch, as decaying matter clogged every system. We worked hard. We lost good people. We cleaned up and closed up, but it was never going to be enough. Really cool material. Good night, pro. I'm off. Awesome stream tonight, you silly little goober. Oh, Thank you, Mexican boy. You have a good night. Take care of yourself. Eight hours minimum, okay? Get your sleep. Rest up. Thanks for chill on. I'm for ZZZ. ZZZ. Like, yeah. Ah! Mm. Did I read this part? No. After many, many cycles, we all knew this place was doomed. But we kept on working, taking, talking less than less, because we couldn't face it. We all developed a death wish. If the green wave was going to die, so would we. What changed? Everything, Rico smiles. We crossed some invisible boundary, tipped some biological scale, and the greenway started to recover. Plants flowered, crops sprouted. For the first time, we reaped the fruits of our labor. Rico smiles, looking up at you. We thought it was us, that we managed to do just enough to end the cycle of decay. I thought we had saved the greenway. Until today. You pass into the grow beds of the commune, rich with the hustle and bustle of Haifa members planting and harvesting. For a while, Rico is quiet, and you both simply observe the hypnotic movements of work crews, the eager chatter washing over you like a wave. Rico smiles to herself. We should have known, of course, that our arrogance was unfounded, but we needed to believe back then. We needed a myth to bring more people across the gap. You both move into a smaller corridor. Rico following some direction unknown to you. What you have shown me is that, back then, the Greenway saved us, not the other way around. Tell me, have you ever consumed one of the Matsutake or Girol caps you have been growing? Uh, I guess I have, because I've had emphasis food, so yes. I imagine they were delicious, nutritious, almost uniquely so, she muses. After all, they were designed for you. Really? Rico has a mischievous look. At first I thought it was the location they were grown in that made the mushrooms from the aviary. From the labs or from the grove different to each other. But what I have come to understand is that it is the person growing them. What? I've been growing them so they're like, they got all the sleeper nutrients. That totally makes sense. Yeah, for that. Oh, well, um. I'm just very prolful cool. That's that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it, man. The Matsutake and Girol caps you brought me are totally unique. I didn't bring you any Matsutake caps, but okay. Containing compounds never usually found in similar specimens in my possession. But you don't even know what I mean? I mean, maybe I do, but I just pretend I don't. Hmm. Don't mind me. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out if possession is can have one S for the first S. Or if that's a typo. It's looking like a typo to me! Uh, 
I don't find any results. I don't find any results. Yeah, F12. Which actually is pretty good for a text game like this. I have not found so many typos in this game. I have not found very many. I'm quite impressed. Unlike some other text game I've been playing that W knows nothing about. Which has had quite a few typos in F12s. You gotta wonder. They did a much better job of spell checking this game. You take your notes, Toby. You take your notes. <laughs> anyway, that possession's misspelled. It should have two S's for both of the sections. F12, F12. Many of these compounds aren't even digestible for humans. But for a sleeper like you... Rico smiles as she leads you into the eternal garden of the commune. Or the Haifa members have planted species from all over the Greenway. Back when the tide turned, when the Greenway started to recover, we all felt something. A response. It was as if this place was not just alive, as a forest al is alive, but alive in other ways. Communicative. Responsive. We shrugged it off at the time, but now I understand why. Rico stops and turns to you. This place is responding to us. Adapting itself to us. It is growing fruiting bodies for you. For me. It is adapting. Changing. It is, in short, displaying all the signs of sentience. Wait, what? The plants are sentient? What? Hey, Red Pyro, what's up? What's up? How's it going? G is an arrow circling. Mm. But it doesn't have, like, the pointy end of an arrow. That's what I mean for those. Oh, that means. I mean, I totally don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Greenway is sentient? Perhaps not the Greenway, but the ecosystem itself, or something within it. Rico sits on a bench with the, within the peaceful gardens and gestures for you to join her. When you have been growing the Girols and the Matsutakes in the aviary, those species so familiar to the Greenway, have you discovered any others? Um, I don't think so. Not yet. Rico nods. If you do, can I ask that you immediately bring them here? I believe it is only a matter of time before they bloom. You look around the garden, amazed at the sense of peace within it. Rico interrupts the silence. There is a species of mushroom that I haven't seen in years. It is dark, short, shaped like a club. We first found it in those early days when we were working to save this place. It was around the time that we started to lose our first members. They were succumbing to some infection, some mold growing deep in the dark mulch that drowned this place. At that point, we thought we were lost. And then these mushrooms emerged from that same black mold. We tested them and saw that they contained some compounds that counteracted the mold. They contained an antidote. Of course, as a botanist, I saw this as part of the natural processes of this ecosystem, even if the timescale seemed absurdly short. But what I am wondering is if that antidote was a gift. Rico meets your eyes. Perhaps if you are patient, you will receive your gift too, sleeper. God damn it, let me be patient. You both sit for a while. Rico seemingly done telling stories for today. You watch the light playing off the leaves and plants around you and wonder what forces could be in play in this place. After a while, you stand and leave, with a quiet nod to Rico, leaving her to her memories. Interesting. For those who are dark deed, it does point at its tail. <laughs> oh, okay, I see it now. It's just that usually arrows have lines going up both directions from the point, you know? I guess I could, I could see it being an arrow. Very clever, but what does it mean? Why? 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 Not bad. 
rocks. It's rock. It's rock. Rock. It's rock. It's rock. What do we got to do now? Clubhead samples? Ooh, I haven't seen clubheads yet. Rico's eager to see the clubhead caps that haven't grown in the aviary. Or that have grown in the aviary. He hasn't seen mushrooms like this in decades. Clubhead analysis. Are these fruiting bodies the same that emerged during the early days of the collapse? Or something else? Uh, well, we gotta wait for this batch to finish. I have a feeling this is related to the, like, special seed thing I got from here. Last stream. Maybe. Possibly. My two became a one. Fuck you! I'm not gonna try getting scrap that. Guess we'll just do one of these. I don't think there's anything to do with all my data now but sell it. Like all the quest lines that required it are done. I'm gonna get like a bajillion chits. Let's feed the stray and go sleep. <sighs> All I can do in the meantime is farm scrap, I guess. That's the only quest line I got right now is the... I'm waiting for Empus. I'm waiting for the mushrooms. And... Uh... I'd rather do those than just jump into the DLC. Got one more day for Empus, I think. <laughs> now I gotta wait for mushrooms. Maybe more to let me know if something pops up. I don't think he will, though. I think that's done. <laughs> you fucking bitch. Took away a condition because I didn't have enough energy. Oh, fucking beach! Harder for food. Only two! I got fucking ripped off. Heal the harvest gives lots of energy, but minus conditions. If I do it three times. And I probably can't do anything there anymore. Don't be mad at me. Seems like the best way right now is to get my stuff here. You understand now? Awful wink. I can't wink, but I'm totally winking right now. Are you fucking little bitch? Holy fuck! This is a this is a shit. This is fucking garbage. Why did they make it a danger instead of a risky? Do you think it's better Citizen Sleeper or the other visual novel that you forgot to say? You forgot about Echo of Star Song? You forgot the name? They're both pretty different. They both have pretty good, uh, stories. Storytelling, world building. I'd say they're about equal wall. Well, I gotta say, Star Song does have voice acting, so... So... At least most of the time. Well, nothing for me to do. 
take a nap, I guess. You pieces of shit, making me waste my scrap on losing my condition, you fucking piece of trash. I'm trying to I'm trying to stretch out those stabilizers by using the scrap. Here goes all my scrap. You see, lady, the issue of this game is you're never really in danger. Bounty turns up and he literally does nothing. He doesn't! So if I hadn't paid his tab, he wouldn't have killed me? And the even bigger bad bounty hunter t turns up and you defeat him easily? That's true. I just shoot him and go bam, bam, bam with my eyes closed and we're good. Negative outcome still gives me energy, so so fuck you. Wow, look at that. Negative energy, boom, still gets it. Uh, I think Emphasis is done. He's ready to talk to. Try his matsu take. Mio. Yes! Emphasis preparing the Matsutake caps. He cleans them carefully with a damp cloth before shaving the stalks as if he was sharpening a pencil. His knife slides through them, revealing the bright white of the flesh within. These are good, sleeper. Very good, he says without looking up. I bartered with Minji for some kelp, too, so we can brew with the dashi. Dashi? A soup base. Very good. Emphasis slides the sliced Matsutake mushrooms to one side and takes out a closed pan. He opens the lid and you see the green wafer of kelp sitting in a bath of water. Been soaking it since last cycle, Emphasis explains. Should be good to warm now. He places the pan over the burner and turns it on low. We have some time now, he wipes his hands to clean and throws the cloth over his shoulder. However, there is one difference this cycle, he smiles. You have been the one providing the ingredients, so it is my turn to provide a story. Uh, okay. Good. The story is important to me. He gestures for you to both sit on the folding stools behind the stall. You see there? Emphis runs a hand over his forearm, tracing the circular scars that mark them like perfect bite marks. Conway called it an anchored interface rig. A mechanical control device for piloting a heavy-duty extraction suit in low-G industrial operations. We called it a bone suit. He points to a pattern of larger circles on his shoulder. They drill in and anchor it here, then all the way down the arm. He taps each scar on the way. It maps mechanical movements to, to the suit exactly. A one-to-one -one mechanical replication. You swing your arm, a two-ton arm swings too. You should have seen the recruitment vids. Strong people in even stronger suits, tearing through stone and scrap. Superheroes. Half my graduating year signed up from company school to company shuttle. Gone way from birth to death. He stares off into the distance for a moment, fighting with the memories. But the bone suits weren't good. The rate of failures was high, and failures meant arms torn off. Aches, anchors torn out. Broken bones. I mean, that seems like a pretty big problem. Yeah, sign up for this thing, by the way. Um, side effects might be your arm fucking getting ripped off. No big deal, though. We'll just give you a robot one if that happens, right? Oh, thank you. I would like to keep my original arm. Thank you very much. Bad stuff. So after a while, Conway discontinued them. No longer competitive, they said. Pfft, bullshit. He checks the broth, turning down the heat and adding the mushrooms. So there we were. Hundreds of us with surgical alterations for suits that didn't work. They sent us home. Back to that company colony that spat us out. To be cleaners, drivers, cooks. 
They gave us drugs for the pain and told us to make something of ourselves. And I deserted, bribing some passing spacers to take me into orbit. There were only me and a couple of others left. The rest just faded away. Arthritis. Osteoporosis. They folded in on themselves like paper lanterns. That was my generation. The anchor points still ache. Still burn. He touches the scars. But what burns worse is the betrayal. I've been on the eye a long time now, but that will never fade. Not that, and not the faces of my friends. Emphis reaches over and sprinkles a handful of leaves into the broth. It is ready. I mean, what am I sorry for? Thank you! Thank you for listening to me. I will not let their story die, and as long as I am telling it, it will remain. Emphis pours the broth into a double-walled metal bowl and hands it to you. The heat radiates through your hands, and the smell drifts up, rich and sharp, like a pine forest after the rain. That's a double-walled bowl. Is that like to keep it from getting too hot on the outside? That's what I'm thinking it is. Double-walled metal bowl. Whoa! Those look interesting. Those look like thicker bolts. Interesting. Oh, you remember another one, huh? The one time the bounty hunter was an actual threat, you find out the barkeep unloaded his gun. Yeah, so if I had shot it at that point, what would have happened is it would have gone click! And we would have found out that it was unloaded anyway. You drink the broth slowly, chewing the matsutake and thinking. Emphis busies himself with cleaning the pans in the bowl. Feeling the kelp back up for another day. Then he quietly comes to sit with you while you finish your meal. Neither of you speak, preferring instead to let the story linger in the air a little longer. It is not that there is nothing to say. It is that sometimes, in the moments after something, speaking breaks the spell. Though you both idle, eager to be in each other's company, Emphis taking longer over his cleaning, his packing, and you savoring the final dregs of broth. When you finally finish and hand him the bowl, you feel the spell break, and the story leaves you both. And as you leave, you know that both of you are somehow a little more empty and a little more full than before. Story Eater Achievement Unlocked. Traded food and stories with a local. Aww. We do have to do the club ones now. Oh, we're done! We're done with him? Oh man, I thought we were gonna get the club head ones. But, okay, I guess we're done with him. There's like nothing down here but selling data if I want it. Got two upgrade points, but everything else it requires three, so. I don't think there's anything up here anymore. They're just making this for money if I want. But what's the point? I can't buy the stabilizers with money anymore. I don't think I can buy his food. Can I buy scrap anywhere? Or do I have to forage for it? Find a ship mine core. There's a place I can buy scrap, then I could see a use for money. I can sell scrap for money, but why would I want to do that? I don't think there's any place that... Is this this one? They're not here right now. 
I like their scrap. More chance of being bad than you have being terminated at the start of the game. Man. I tend to believe this. How much do I get from this? Ten cryos. Oh, it's down here again? Nothing anymore. can cook mushrooms here. I'm not sure why though. For energy, I guess? There's no predictive thing that tells me what it does. I might try the ghee rolls when I get some more to see what they do. This is just ship mines. Yeah, yeah there's no place to buy scrap. You can sell it. The place to buy scrap, I think, is that place at the beginning that leaves and cycles through. We'll have to wait for it. Until then, the only thing to do is, uh... Do this? I should only do the ones that give me neutral. The negative ones kill my condition, so... Oh, negative here for this neutral is energy. Interesting. 100% positive should give me two scraps. God damn it. That's all the thing I can do now is grow some mushrooms. Oh yeah, I do need more mushroom spores for the next batch, don't I? Do, 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 do. True. So, you were having a good time when you saw me almost die then, right, Dobie? No comment. I got pretty close to dying. You're sad. Uh, I don't want to do the ones that are negative. Oh. I got forgot about that. No place to buy food. There's food here, but it only does two, so it's a ripoff. I'd rather just go a little bit farther down to Emphis and eat his shit and get three. Two cryo less and I get one extra bar. Like, why wouldn't I do that? What do I want to do with these? I could do those and sell them. Or I could try to fish for uh, caps, but... The downside of that is condition, isn't it? Oh, but... Oh, wait. I'm not trying to collect spores. Yeah, this one. Let's, let's accidentally ding my condition again. I knew it. I got nothing from that. All the good ones don't even have a point. I got... I rolled a one and got a one. Ten out of ten job. I tried to re-roll, got the same die. Oh, a genius! I'm sure there's no point in doing anything with the best for harvesting, foraging. I mean, or a uh, scrap. So dumb bass. Hey, I had a one out of six chance of getting something else, and I didn't.
Is that going to be enough to get six or not? I'm not sure. More questions. What's left of the base game? Who knows? Oh, it's five. I didn't. What are you talking about? I don't want any of the ones that give me negative. But maybe for this, I'll try it. Oh, energy. Alright, that's cool. An 83% chance of getting something better? Uh, let's try again. Wow, that was much better. They're ready now. Maybe it cost fucking dice. Oh, I got one club head and one Matsutake. Now we put in our three spores again. We get to wait some days again. Won't that be exciting? How many did she want? She wanted three club heads, and we got three club heads. Woohoo! We got the thing of my things. <clears throat> you hand them over to an eager Rico who immediately begins work on the samples. Rico is at her bench, running small vials of some liquid through an old chemical analysis machine. The whirring of the spinning drum fills the lab with white noise, and you aren't sure if she notices you approach. Sleeper, it's good to see you. He looks up smiling. This little product check of ours has been keeping me awake the past few cycles. But right now, well, I think I have something. You should rest! I know my limits, she laughs to herself. I just don't like paying attention to them. <laughs> The drum finishes spinning and Rico lifts the vial from it, holding it up to the light. This is something I've extracted from those club heads you've been bringing me. And according to my analysis, it is a substance totally unique on the Greenway. You look at the small amount of liquid in the vial. Any idea what it might be? Rico asks, without looking away from the vial. Think it could be stabilizer? That'd, that'd just be a random guess. It'd be pretty unlikely. Well, actually, if the Greenway is supposed to give you what you need, it's whatever you plant, right? Then I could totally see it trying to grow stabilizer for me. Oh, uh, sure. That's a good guess. Let's go. Rico nods. You aren't the first sleeper to come through here. Perhaps I should have mentioned that earlier. Rico's tone suddenly drops, changing the atmosphere in the lab immediately. I just thought... She pauses, thinking very carefully of how to continue. 
I just wanted you to trust us. Stay silent. They came through a fair few cycles ago. We found them wandering in the broken section near the gap. The members who brought them in had never seen one of you before. They were terrified of this strange person, wandering in from open vacuum. They were quieter than you, and damaged. We did our best to patch them up and welcome them to the commune. I only really spoke to them once, while I was working on their wounds along with a couple of systems engineers. He looks nervously at you. I'd never seen a body like that before. I took some readings. Some samples. Ah, uh, we'll, we'll let her talk. Rico scans your face for any sign of a reaction. The next cycle, they were gone. They took a little food and hiked up towards the wild margins, where the greenway meets the wastes. Someone saw them in the distance, but that was it. They disappeared into the overgrowth. She sits down heavily, the vial in her hand. When I saw you, I wanted things to be different. I wanted to keep you here, rather than let you disappear into... wherever they ended up. She smiles to herself. Yes, I wanted to understand this place better, but I also wanted to help you. I mean... I wonder if that sleeper was the one with Ashton. Maybe. It seems that somehow both my wishes have come true at once. She holds out a hand with the vial. This is for you. You take the stabilizer, the glass cold and smooth in your palm. Ow! Those clubhead caps made it for you. Or at least who or wh whatever made those clubheads. She starts to clear her bunch. It was right there, contained in their tissue. I only had to extract it. I imagine you understand how incredible that is. I learned enough from that sleeper to know that your body, your frame, is it, runs on some exotic technology. Exotic technology that has a time limit built in. Somehow the Greenway knows that too. It understands your physiology much better than I ever could. It knows how to treat you. Just like that miraculous antidote that sprung from the mold. So too has this sprung from your presence here. The Greenway is speaking to you. It is welcoming you. He looks up. I know it sounds crazy, but I know it to be true. Here's the evidence. And what I also know is it is no longer speaking to me. Even after decades here, I have never seen this kind of response. Not since the antidote so many cycles ago. He smiles. So I'm going to make you a deal. You bring me as many club heads as you like. I'll extract the stabilizer and give it to you. Really. But you have to tell me what the Greenway says. You have to speak with it. What? Speak to the... Uh, I'm going to phone call him. Burring, burring. Hey, Greenway. What's going on today? That's right. I totally got that. <laughs> you have to speak with it. To dig into it, to find what is what being is at the center of it. I've traveled as far as I can. I need you to do the rest. Can you do that? Yeah, sure. Why not? Rico sighs with relief and deflates into her chair. Thank you. I'm sorry for the other sleeper. Truly, I am. I'm sorry I couldn't have done more. But I'm so glad I met you. She smiles. You are welcome here any time. Rico falls silent. He looks smaller now, more fragile, and you realize how old she must be to have seen the collapse firsthand. You idle a little in the lab, in case she asks for anything else, but she remains silent, and so you drift back into the tunnel, thoughts of that other sleeper, and where they ended up, weighing on your mind. Ah. Grow your own achievement unlocked. Became self-sufficient through botany. Yeah! I'm, I'm self-sufficient now. I don't need your stupid scrap no more. I just need m uh, mushrooms instead, which take longer to get. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Mm. I feel lab stabilizer synth synthesis. With a couple of club head caps, Rico can extract the miraculous stabilizer they produce. It's a hard, hard thing to believe. 
What's this one? Plant seed. Oh! The only way to understand what Gardner gave you is to grow it. Rico is incredibly excited by the prospect. Oh! So I had to do all that? I had to do all of her quest stuff to get the... To use the seed, huh? Oh! Let's, let's do it. I'll take good care of it, sleeper. Rico smiles. Don't you worry. It'll take five days? Gardener's gift. The seed is planted, and Rico is an attentive mother to it. What future is forming there? No, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. It takes eight days? Damn. That's right, though. But that's right. I'm going to do all that to use that seed we got last time. I mean, I guess that makes sense. I got the seed from this area when I first was, like, doing this stuff. So. It makes sense. But. Should have done it sooner. Psh. It's my first playthrough. I don't know why I should do sooner or not do sooner. You know that. That's eight days of waiting. I oh, know, right? Whatever will I do for eight days? Harvest scrap, I guess. What else can we do? We could export Matsutaka. Can I do anything else with the mushrooms? Memphis is done. I don't think there's anything else I can do with them. Now I got four stabilizers. Know something you can do? What's that? Be super profical. Like the negative. I do need more growth spores uh, for the next batch of mushrooms. At least I think I do. Well, now I guess I go to well, one scrap to keep myself at six. Max late. Ruffle wink. Sounds like something scandalous. Now you know what the next game is. Hmm, it is about time to, uh, wrap up the game, isn't it? I got three upgrade points. What should we do? If we plus two that, do we get, do we get two, uh, better chances of good dice, or do we just get two rolls? <laughs> or maybe we get more condition for scrap? Although I can synthesize it, now. I'm gonna plus two this. If we get better dice, we won't. We'll be just as garbage as before. What's this? Bam! Oh, well, that was pretty good. My, my food. I'm starving. Okay. That one became a three. 
still lost it. <laughs> Rip. Splunky too. Why would I start uh, that today? I should feed my cat. I haven't fed my cat in ages. Reach a rat! Jet! Four. That's it. How'd you know? How'd you know? How did you know? I go now because you have an early flight in the morning, but have a good night. You have a good flight, Lou up. Thanks for chilling. Take care of yourself. Get there in time and uh, have have a good time, right? Have a good one. It's your Z's, Z's, Z's. Eight hours a bit above, unless you can't do that. Unless it's alright, less than eight hours. In which case, you do the best you can. Nothing I can do here. Just go to sleep. Oh, I could have done this crap. Yeah, I could have gotten six dice instead of five, but. Are you fucking piece of shit. How dare you. Yeah, those are better. The energy thing is gonna drive me insane! 13 only get two bars. Farmers take the chits hesitantly and then pass you the food. How dare they! How dare they hesitantly accept my food and let me eat. Oh, rope. Should have made the energy six bars. It's so 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 annoying to have it. only do emphasis once, then duplicate it. Get our next energy spores. I don't think there's anything I can do with Mots talking about sell it. Oh, but these guys might need Mothtake. Right now they need Gee Roll, right? DLC guys. They might need Mothtake later, though. Here, uh, I get the feeling we'll be doing them next time, because I don't think there's a whole lot more to do. You guys say I'm running out of quest lines to work on. What's that? Kind of, yeah, that's totally the next one. All right, how'd you know? That's it. Fire of the Dragon, Purple Dragon game. Flash. Got to feed our cat. I'm like stabilizer. I don't need no stabilizer. I'm just scrapping it up. Hee 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 hee. Right. Hmm. Well, I guess that's about it for today. We've hit our three and a half hours, haven't we?
Next time we will uh, plant more mushrooms. We'll see what this garden thing ends up being. See what we get. And I have the feeling we'll probably be done with the base game next time. Except for any achievements I missed on my first playthrough. So, uh, we will probably start the DLC next time. Won't that be exciting? We get to go see the cool story over there. And after we finish the DLC, we go clean up any achievements we missed after our first playthrough. <laughs> Won't that be cool? Suicide Squad? That's gotta be on PS Plus by like September, man. Why would I buy it? What am I, a fool? No. I'm a pro. Joker's out in the game now. Joker wasn't out there immediately? He wasn't day one? Is he not one of the main faces of Suicide Squad? Not that I know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I just assumed he was one of the main guys. Well, I'm sure that has uh, turned the game around and made it amazing. Sure. You, you know it. Alright, that's enough citizen sleeper for today. Enough citizen sleeper. Next time we will finish growing mushrooms. Next time we'll just grow endless mushroom track. See what gardener seed thing we got. Probably start DLC. It'll be exciting. It'll be cool. I was a hip hopping and bopping popping citizen sleeper stream. It was very cool. It was very profile. It was very exciting. It was amazing. We helped Bliss. Helped Ankita. Helped Moritz. Got to help Emphis as well. I'm helping uh, Rico here. I'm sure this seat will be very exciting. It'll be cool. Until next time. Ooh, ha 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 ha.